there it was, sitting on the side of the road over 8,000 miles away from my home in California. It had the correct dark Highland green paint, the iconic American torque thrust wheels, and a stance that was about as close to perfect as you could possibly get. So the other day when we were at the event of Caffeine and Machine, we came upon this, a 1968 Ford Mustang that's kind of a tribute car to the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen. Now, believe it or not, we've actually been looking for not so much a Bullet replica to film for Big Muscle, but a 68 Mustang. I mean, it's one of the most iconic American cars ever. We just didn't know we were gonna fly 14,000 miles to find one. This is a car that inspires so many people to do what they do, right? I mean, I have a 68 Charger, this is the 68 Mustang. That car chase in the movie Bullet inspired so much of what I do with Big Muscle. I never thought I'd be driving it in the Middle East, but I am, and it's an amazing thing. Now granted, we were a long way from San Francisco, and Frank Bullet was nowhere to be seen, and there wasn't a black 68 Charger in sight. That, however, didn't stop me from taking advantage of an open road that lay in the middle of the desert just outside Dubai when a gracious owner tossed me the keys to his 68 Mustang Fastback and said, have at Khalid, the owner, he found this car and it was, it was a mess, right? There was no dashboard in the car, the paint was a mess, the body was a mess, it was solid, but it needed a lot of work. He had never seen a 68 Mustang Fastback in person, ever. He had seen it on television, he had seen it in the movies, but he never actually laid his eyes on one until he saw this car. He bought the car in Colorado, had the car done, shipped it back to the UAE. So what do we have for mechanics? Let's talk about this. Now the Mustangs were always, they were always fun little sport coupe cars. This started out as a 289 car, but he had it stroked to a 347. He added fuel injection to it, he added a T5 tranny, and the result is a car that not only sounds good, but that performs great as well. Suspension modifications are subtle, but they're correct and they're right, meaning you look at the stance of the car. He's got the torque thrust replica wheels, he's got a nice set of BFG you know, radial TAs on it, and it's stanced very well, right? It doesn't rake, it just sits nice and flat, and the car looks really, really good. The rack on this thing is really quick. Like, if I go like this, we're moving. I can do a quarter turn in my Charger, and the thing just doesn't go anywhere. I mean, this the steering racks on these cars have been used on so many different hot rods, and they're wonderful, and they're great, they feel good. It, it just, it, it, it feels right. Suspension-wise, it's pretty stock, with the exception of QA1 shocks. Now, you can adjust them for firmness and stiffness. It's not out of the realm of, you know, we didn't go too crazy with it from a, let's make it a pro touring car. Instead, what we did was, let's just make it a real good driver. Understand this. A stock 68 Mustang is no joy to drive. They handle poorly, they aren't that quick, and they don't take abuse nearly as well as you might think. Thanks, however, to the fuel-injected 347 stroker, the T5 transmission, and some updated suspension bits, not only was romping on this thing a non-issue, but that type of behavior was more than encouraged by its owner. crossed in front of the car. I didn't expect that. It kind of threw me for a loop. Look at all these camels! Look at 
all these f***ing paddles. Oh, that guy's got a huge hump. That guy, he's getting out on my way. This is a roundabout bike. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's the other thing about that this place. There are, they're not big on stoplights. They're big on roundabouts. And if you're not familiar with roundabouts, you know, they are what they are. Whee! The car actually handles nice and flat. Let's do a pull, let's see. <laughs> Hello, camels! <laughs> Here in the Middle East, it gets hot outside, like stupid hot. So think about, I don't know, it's July and it's 130 out. And you wanna take your big block muscle car, your small block muscle car out for a ride. Well, the simple matter is, you can't. You just can't. These cars don't perform well in the heat. Even in the States, these cars just don't perform well in the heat. So they're basically parked for most of the year. You get three to four months out of the year, and then maybe you could take it out every now and again at night and really ring them out and enjoy them. But the heat makes these cars kind of prohibitive. It makes it, what am I trying to say? Difficult. That, the captain, captain synonym. When we, when we came over here, I didn't know what to expect as far as car culture. I mean, we look at the car culture online and all we see are, are you know, LaFerraris and Zondas and Koenigseggs and every other form of, of high-end, you know, exotic. But the muscle car scene and the classic American scene over here has really caught on and it's really starting to grow. The Emiratis are looking at these cars and they're going, there's something to this. We want to experience this. I love the engagement of these cars. I love the way that they make me feel. And they do too. And that's the coolest part. Like, you know, as an American to be over here and see one of our cars that's really being enjoyed for what it is and the style makes me really, really proud. And the other cool part is I've got not only great contacts, but we're friends now. I don't give a shit what your political views are. I don't give a shit what your religious views are. I don't care. As far as this goes, it's a great equalizer, man. You could be Muslim, you could be Catholic, you could be Jewish. We all speak automobile. We all speak hot rod. You keep doing that, the world will be a better place. It's unbelievable. This is a wonderful experience. Colin, I can't, I can't thank you enough for letting us do this. You know? I think now what we have to do is I want to see what other cars are out here. See if maybe we can find something. Something else. Dude, look in your mirror. What's that thing? Dude, look in your mirror. You really? Really? You got <laughs> You gotta be kidding me! I love it here. There's no <laughs> laws. <laughs> Nobody can. <laughs> you can drive fast as you want right next to the highway. You guys are never gonna believe what we just saw. This is the great. This is awesome. I love this. I love being here. I fucking love this place. Dude, he is rolling. There's a guy next to us in what seems to be like, it's gotta be like an early 70s Ford F-250 or F-150, but it's gonna be converted into like a pre-runner truck. And he's bombing. Oh, he's stopping. He's stopping up here, okay. We gotta see what this is about. Yeah, oh yeah, it's time to talk with this guy. Hang on a sec. He's stopping and he's looking at us and he's just laughing. <laughs> I'll be right back because this is too good. I can hear you just get out and just say, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> what's going on, dude? Holy cow. It's hard to put into words what it was like to drive one of the most iconic American cars through a desert in the Middle East. Stating it was a sublime experience would be an understatement. And honestly, one that I didn't think could be topped. Until that is, I was passed by another classic Ford that tackled speed and abuse in a 
much different fashion than the Mustang I was currently seeing.